Now, there's no guarantee the field goal would have went, but I think most would have taken um, the, the kick, the lead, and you had the second team quarterback in for the Lions, and I, I don't think they had but maybe one or two first downs in the second yeah. half up to that point. Yeah, that's really bizarre. And then he says, I just yeah, didn't feel like it. <laughs> I think his ego overrode him, and maybe he just said, if we can't score from the one-foot line against the Lions, we shouldn't win. It might have been more of that kind of mentality as opposed to what he – he uh, claimed in a statement. I know you're close with Matthew Stafford. He does some work for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Uh, it must have been very disappointing for you like it was for everyone to see him go down uh, before the end of the first half, and uh, we're all hoping that it's not too serious. What do you know, if anything? Uh, at this point, I, I, they were going to come back. Um, the evaluation was uh, come back, have an MRI, and kind of go from there. It, it did sound like it was going to be... Um, more than just a game, and um, until they get that evaluation, it can really determine what happened. Uh, they won't be able to make any 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 call on how long he'll be out. But it's important. Matthew worked extremely hard in the off season. He was looking uh, very ready to take on a whole different uh, role for the team, and uh, the injury is untimely. So now they're going to need a, a, to bring in a quarterback, I guess, because they only have two. Uh, if that's the case, and. Uh, I, I thought that the, the second sting, string quarterback uh, was was very unimpressive until that last drive, and then we come to the catch, no catch. Now this is Calvin Johnson, one of his patented in the end zone, leap up high, get his hands on the ball, and look like a touchdown, but uh, the video uh, replay up in the booth says no touchdown, and here's Bears head coach Lovey Smith saying, hey, the officials made the right call. I saw it exactly the way he did. Uh, didn't really think they, they had to look at the replay for it. The rule says you have to come down and complete the catch all the way through. The ball came out at the end, so that was cut and dry. And Jim Schwartz, the Lions coach, says, yeah, he understands even why that call was overturned. Here's his, his audio. The rule is if, if, uh, if you're going to the ground in the process of making a catch, you need to finish with the football, and we didn't finish with the football. Yeah, he knows the rule. I mean, he's trying to come down with it. He had one hand to keep it away from the other guy, and he's trying to, you know, get his feet down and go to a knee. I mean, it wasn't like he was trying to flip it to the official or anything. You know, I mean, that's what it is. Calvin Johnson, for his part, says he assumed his catch was good. Here's what he said. I thought game's over, you know. This is the first thing that went through my head. Game over, we won, you know. We finally beat the Bears at, at uh, Chicago. And um, come to find out after I sprint halfway across the field that, it's, you know, that is something else, but, um, you know, you got to move on. It is what it is. It's over. Can't do nothing about it. What did, I, I don't know how well you were able to see it in the stadium but, or if they had it on video replay or whatever, but w what did you think? Uh, they had it on video replay, and it was right in the corner of that end zone when he made the catch, and it was I, – I, I truly thought he made the catch, and the game was over as well. I, uh, the, most of the Bears fan in that area did, too. It was kind of interesting – I think that's a newer uh, rule, the process they put in this year, and I don't think they expected it to come out in week one and be uh, controversial around the uh, win or loss of a game the first week of the season. But um, it, it looked like a catch, uh, but understanding the rule, um, as the rule stated, it, it wasn't, and it's just one of those unfortunate things. Um, it seems to me the rule is a, is very hazy, and it's almost like a judgment call because he had two hands on it when he caught it in the air. Then he started to pull it down and stumble, but that big hand of Calvin Johnson firmly had <laughs> that football, you know what I mean, in his grasp. It's not like he was bobbling it. He, that ball wasn't going anywhere. Uh, so that seems a little unfair. I mean, what is a catch? If, you, if your hand is big enough to hold a ball in one hand, why isn't that a catch? And the other piece that it sort of almost opposes in the rules is how they define a touchdown. A control of the ball crossing the plane, and, and clearly he's in the end zone when he has that two-handed catch and brings it down on the ground. And then it almost looks like the ground caused the fumble, right? Because he had it in one hand. The ground causes the fumble. It, it sort of contradicts the ground can't cause the fumble and breaking the plane. So there's going to have to be some... Some, uh, more input to that rule, and I, I bet there's there's clarification that uh, is imposed on that policy or rule. Yeah, and he didn't even really fumble it. He just uh, sort of put it down on the ground. He used it to stop his fall is the way I saw it. And, and you're right. Like, if you're a running back and you fly over the uh, end zone line 
You don't have to land in the end zone with the ball. I mean, the ball can even come out. Once you go through that pane of glass, it's a touchdown. Yeah, exactly. And so it, 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 it somewhat opposes those rules and how they uh, govern those versus uh, what they called on them yesterday. So there's clearly a gap in some of the interpretation and how they call that. So, yeah. it's, you know, it's just one of those crazy things. I, I really did, like Kelvin Johnson said, I thought the Lions beat them in Chicago, broke the 21-game losing streak on the road, and... You know, we get Matthew Stafford healthy, and you know things are cooking. But yeah, you know, it's a, it's it's one game, and there's a lot of season left. So I was encouraged. A lot of bright spots by the Lions yesterday. Uh, the only bright, not bright spot, of course, is that Matthew Stafford. Now we understand is maybe two to six weeks. Here is uh, Jim Schwartz yesterday saying he's really not sure how long Matt, Matthew Stafford will be sidelined. The time that I stand up here and start blaming officials for a loss is a time that uh, I don't need to be doing this anymore. Okay? We had chances to win the game. Um, we had chances to put the game away. Um, we battled uh, our butts off the entire game. But to, uh, to point at one play like that as, uh, as the reason we won or lost is, uh, is not going to be us. Tony, just play the other clip now, too, where Jim Schwartz says he's not sure how long Stafford will be sidelined. Don't, ha don't have it. All right, we'll get to it later. <laughs> I guess that's what we know, though. But, I mean, now, now what happens? I mean, now the whole sort of um, we're going to have a home opener without our star quarterback. A lot of gas could go out of the, the sales. I guess Friday we'll talk about what happens uh, Sunday when they get the home opener at Ford Field against Philadelphia. But anyway, we all think it's a catch. The NFL doesn't think it's a catch. You can watch it 100 times and dispute it all you want, but it's not coming back. That's the way the cookie crumbles. But uh, anyway, it was a nice day in Chicago.